In this video today, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and create or modify a Ford ZF5 transmission from a Ford 60 and how to do a manual clutch setup on it. This is something that I looked on the internet to try to find some information and it was a little bit spotty, could never find a really good guide all in one place. So I decided it might be a good time to put together a video for it. And just a little bit about this pickup, all those detailed more in another video. This is a 69 F100 four wheel drive. And I took this 460 donor engine out of a 1991. So I went ahead and took the engine transmission transfer case just to make it all, you know, supposedly an easy swap. So when I first worked on this, I went ahead and maybe you still see that the master cylinder's in here. I tried to go ahead and make the hydraulic setup work. And there are some reasons, which I'll detail later, why that didn't. I never felt like I'd get enough throw out of it. Uh, as we, I think, all know, it's not really adjustable. I also fought some firewall flex, and I made a brace, you know, internally to try to deal with that, and it helped some, but it never got to the point where I felt it was going to be a good setup going forward. I've been around mechanical setups, you know, around these old pickups for a long time, and like the, the level of adjustability that you can have, and, and plus, once they're set up correctly, they, they just work. And so I guess uh, hang tight with me and, and we'll go through some of the major steps here and how I made this swap work. Some of you might be thinking, why are you going from a hydraulic setup, which a lot of people are actually trying to go to, and why are you going from a mechanical setup? Well, here, here's the reason why. So the, the factory uh, flywheel and clutch are sitting here, set up for a 12 inch clutch. So part of the thing I didn't mention part of the video here is that this uh, pickup is getting the torque storm supercharger on it and because uh, the added power I'm shooting for you know 550 plus horsepower because of that I wasn't real confident in the cast flywheel and so I wanted to go ahead and get a better flywheel on it so I had bought a Ford Racing 11 inch billet flywheel externally balanced and went ahead and put this on the engine and then of course I had it at the machine shop it got balanced and everything and we seem like we're in good shape well one of the things that I was not aware of is that that 11 inch flywheel was set up for a long pattern pressure plate which is different than the clutch setup that comes factory on this ZF5 um, clutch setup here so another thing too I'll try to show it a little bit uh, the thickness between this uh, 12 inch flywheel um, that comes factory is about a quarter inch thicker than this uh, 11 inch flywheel is and I'll tell you why that makes a difference here in a little bit um, I started looking around for a clutch setup then for that 11 inch billet flywheel and it was a tough time trying to find something I never did really find a kit that would actually work so I'll show you what I ended up piecing together I went on McLeod's website and communicate back and forth their tech center so this is what I went ahead and went forward with as far as uh, the pressure plate goes. So you can see that it's a diaphragm clutch for 11 inch that fits the long pattern. And so, you know, that's what I went with there. And then separately for my clutch disc, you know, most Fords are an inch and 16th, 10, in, uh, 10 spline sh input shaft. Uh, the ZF5 transmission is actually an inch and a quarter. So this is the a clutch disc here if you're going to go ahead and use the same similar setup as me so once again wh why does this matter well when I went to piece it together is that because that quarter inch different there or at the thickness of the flywheel if we think about how our clutch fork sits in there it's not a one-to-one -one setup there um, I haven't measured this one so I don't know exactly what it is but it's probably like a two to one or three to one um, leverage on that arm. So if I have a quarter inch difference of thickness on the flywheel, um, that quarter inch, you know, at the end of my clutch fork could now be, if it's two to one, it could be half inch. If it's three to one, it could be three quarters of an inch. And so where I don't have, you know, any adjustability at all in that hydraulic setup, um, by the time I make up that gap, uh, I just, I don't think I have enough throw there to go ahead and disengage the clutch. So that was uh, part of the reason that I went ahead and just decided to go to the mechanical setup because I can go ahead and adjust it out of that and get my full engagement for my clutch pedal there. I'll try to get a good shot into here. 
The problem with the ZF5 is it has that framework built in there. That's where the slave cylinder clips in there. And on some of the 400 setups and the 460 setups, uh, which have the same bill housing, of course, there is a bracket for the Z bar that bolts to the back side of the bell housing there. And the, the brackets as you buy them uh, won't work with that slave cylinder frame being the position that it's in. So you'll have to go ahead and modify the bracket uh, to make it work. So part of it is because of the piece that you know comes out that the bolt, the bottom bolt is kind of right there where my finger's pointing. So it kind of sits in there uh, behind the, the frame there. And there's just webbing that goes in this direction. You have to make a cut on the front side of that as well to go ahead and, and clear the webbing. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the, the bracket and the modifications that I had to make to make it all work. So here are your crucial parts and pieces that you're going to need. So this here, um, case of my pickup, it was uh, set up with a 360. So this is actually the factory bracket that bolts to the frame. Uh, for that Z bar that works in the 360 setup. Uh, this here is that factory Z bar. And so it's uh, it's set up in such a way that it's pretty easy to repurpose. In fact, I didn't have to make any modifications to it. Here's that bracket that bolts to the back of the bell housing there. And maybe it's kind of clear what some of the modifications are. Uh, when we look at this bracket, you can kind of see that there's this cut out of it. Um, I had to make that cut. That was square at that bottom bolt hole there. It came square across. Um, I went ahead and traced the pattern there onto a piece of cardboard and then cut out this scissors and then started just playing around with it to make sure that it would fit before I went ahead and transferred it to the metal. So from this side, it's pretty easy to make you know that part of it fit. But then as we talked about, there's that webbing that comes out from the transmission. And that's where this cut out here needs to happen. Um, one of the things too, you'll see this weld mark um, in this direction. So what happened is, is that uh, the engine, I, I used some L&L mounts, and this is actually an L&L bracket as well. And I, I felt that the L&L mount, uh, frame mounts made the engine sit too high, so I'd sectioned a piece out of it so I could set the engine lower. Uh, the engine sat lower by approximately half inch. So of course, you know, where this Z-bar mount is, it's approximately then was half inch too high as well. So I went ahead and, and made a cut, kind of a box type cut, and then I was able to cut a half inch, I think in this case 7 16 section out of it, was able to move it up and, and re-weld it. So now my height, you know, is fairly good. Here's the other key piece that's gonna have to work. This is the piece, of course, that goes on to that Z-bar bracket. And where the factory length is, you can see about where the stop nut is, this end piece right here went ahead and threaded pretty much to where the stop nut was. And that was the overall length of, of this bar, this actuation rod, which is approximately six inches long. So this is a 3 8 fine thread. So I went down to the local hardware store, found a fine coupling nut. I went ahead and got me a grade 8 3 8 fine bolt. And of course, the threads only went a certain length of it, so I had to go ahead and run my tap along the whole length of it. So then, of course, I bought two new fine nuts as well. And so this is a stop nut here for the coupler to connect this rod to this rod. And then this, of course, will be a stop nut for, for here. I left it back a little bit, of course, so I can easily, you know, make some adjustment. So we'll go ahead and, and I'll start piecing some of it together so you can all see how it fits. So as you can see, there's a Z-bar brace that is bolted there to the back of the bell housing and probably a little more evident of why those cuts were made in the spots that they were. Um, one of the things I will throw out here, and uh, full disclosure, that top bolt hole is a, a bad deal. Uh, when I, in fact, just get the bolt out without the bracket, I had to go ahead and get a pry bar in there and wedge because the bolt, when it gets pulled out, it's, it wedges against the cab here. You know, if you made a, a dimple at some point, it probably would help you out, however, I'm past the point of taking the engine out so I can make a dimple, get the bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get the bolt in there um, without making a slot in that top hole. But for some reason that I can't make that work, I'm just going to cut a little bit of a slot. That way I can get my bolt, you know, in there, kind of started just a little bit or at least in the hole. 
and then I'll be able to slide the bracket in, um, put the slot in it, drop it down, um, tighten both bolts up, and, and away we go. So I'll, I'll make sure I add some uh, some flavor there on whether I had to slot or not, or whether I heave hoed it enough with pry bar to get that bolt in. But that's what the, the Z bar bracket is going to look like. So next, I just went ahead and put that actuation rod on the Z bar itself. And so there's a little thin kind of wavy washer that goes on first, and then the arm, and then another washer, and then a cotter pin. I'm not going to set my cotter pin quite yet because I'm just putting this together for demonstration purposes. And I'll need to take it apart later and really grease everything really good uh, before my final assembly. But this is what it's going to look like. One other thing, too, the way that the clutch arm sits, it sits pretty short, shorter than what a manual arm would. And so you can see this slight bend that I put in the arm there so that it helps it make that uh, transition over the clutch fork a little bit easier. So here's how it looks like with the Z-bar in place. So you can see the clutch actuation rod. It goes right there into the clutch fork. Happens to go nice right between that slot where that slave cylinder fits. And you can see I also uh, fixed where the arm you can point to it where the arm comes through the floor uh, and it connects right there and it just has a cotter pin that goes through it too. As I mentioned, I'm not going to set it yet um, because I want to go ahead and get everything greased good on final assembly. But you can kind of see how it all goes together there and how it engages into the clutch arm or the clutch fork, I should say. All right, we're getting closer. You can see how the frame bracket there. It uses the existing holes. I went ahead and deepened the slots. I made them deeper a little bit. It sits a little more outboard than did before, but uh, it still seems like it, it moves nice and free. You can see that the, you know, the actuation rod that comes through the floor, you know, it moved over just a little bit, but it's, it's still free movement, you know, up and down. You can see that that puts us, hard to show, but we're actually fairly square even though it's hard to show here on the camera lens. And then if I look over from the horizontal perspective and come over here, my light's kind of in the way, but you can see that it sits pretty nice and level. So that's where that 7 16th adjustment had to be where I had to bring it up. So we tried to keep everything pretty true to where it was from the factory in order to keep it and make it all work. And so now we'll just go ahead and I'll uh, tighten this down and I'll show you what things look like from the underneath. Little cramp quarters down here, but I'll show you as best I can what we have going on. So you can see that here's our uh, actuation rod and it goes right here into the, the clutch fork. And so there's a little bit of slop right now, which is actually good. You don't want it to be too tight. And so one of the things you have to play with is that, you know, where do you like your engagement? Do you like it, you know, right off the bottom of the floor? Do you like it to gauge, you know, halfway through? A lot of that's personal preference, how you like to drive. But I got enough adjustment here that I can make it do whatever I want. One of the things, if you have a manual clutch, make sure that it is a little bit loose. You don't want to get it too tight because it'll hold that throw out bearing against the clutch and it'll wear it out faster. So that's actually probably not too far off, although I might play with it here just a little bit. The important thing then on a manual clutch too is that you have the spring. And so there's the, the factory bracket. And so the factory bracket, get my finger in the right spot, you can see that hole right there. That's where the factory spring attached was. Um, however, when I started looking at what it was gonna take, um, if I did this and I pulled the spring over, it was gonna go ahead and, and interfere with this actuation rod. So by moving some holes inboard, I actually drilled two, so I'm not sure which one I was gonna need, is it goes ahead and it puts it in a different plane, so it's not gonna interfere with that rod. Um, last thing I'll go ahead and, and talk about a little bit is you can kind of see the backside of the clutch fork, and I tried to drill that thing, you know, for my spring to go into, and it is a dirty, hard son of a gun. Um, barely could make a mark on a center punch and then I tried a whole bunch of different bits and I could not cut through that thing. So finally what I ended up doing, I was very, very careful, took my plasma cutter and I just blew a hole through it. Uh, once I blew a hole through it, 
I was able to take a drill bit and at least clean it up a little bit. And so that's where my springs can end up connecting. I'll go ahead and connect it real quick and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here's everything with that spring connected as well. So you can see that it, it doesn't interfere with that arm. It also comes right through the slot. And so it's good throughout the course of, of movement as well. So I think it's a good setup that should um, last the test of time here. Um, I, I went ahead and I have cycled through it from inside the cab and it sure feels you know like it's going to work. Um, that pressure plate is definitely stiffer than what the factory is. Of course it's a, a better clutch um, for higher power so it does make sense that it's going to be a little bit stiffer. But that kind of details my setup here and how to go ahead and make a, a 460 ZF5 transmission um, except a manual clutch setup. Let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. So hopefully that helps everybody if you're looking to do something similar to I am. If you use the factory you know, clutch setup, of course, uh, the hydraulic I think would work plum fine. Uh, where I'm looking for a higher power application and want to put a better clutch and get that built flywheel on it, that's where I ran into some problems. I also toyed around with the idea of you know cutting the, the rod on the slave cylinder and, and threading it and maybe trying to make some adjustability there. Uh, I didn't really want to think around the flywheel, or not, sorry, flywheel, the, the firewall too much uh, to avoid the flexing, so I just kind of went with the tried and true mechanical setup here. Stay tuned, I got other videos I'm going to go ahead and make for this pickup. The main reason for making these videos is just things I found out, you know, during research and, and things that, you know, aren't out there right now. Um, one of the next fun videos I want to make is that, I mentioned earlier, this engine is going to go ahead and get a Torque Storm supercharger put on it. And so I kind of had to work with them and kind of customize what the setup is going to be where this was an EFI engine. Uh, I, I tried to use as much of the serpentine setup as I can. That factory setup is a two belt and I was able to make it into a one belt setup. Uh, along with the supercharger, it also is going to have a five tech throttle body that's going to go on top of it. And so I've got some other fun things. Um, also I have power steering setup that I, I put onto it and some, some different things that maybe we'll talk about as well. So, Stay tuned, hopefully this is the first of many videos to come, and I hope this helps. If there's any questions that you do have, go ahead and put them down in the comments section, and I'll, I'll make additional videos if I think it'll help. And there's some work that I've already done that I'll, I'll go back and kind of explain what happened, and then we'll talk about some of the things that are still to come on this project. So thank you very much for doing, I appreciate it. Thank you.